Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Happy Sunday and welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing great. Hope everybody is having uh, a wonderful uh, Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. Uh, next Friday we are off. We are. It is a good Friday and let me be the first one to wish everybody a happy Easter for next week. But let's talk about this week, right? Let's talk about this week. If you are, by the way, uh, new to the channel, please like uh, share, subscribe, would really appreciate growing uh, the message of unbiased technical analysis based on the previous night's research. We're not into guessing, we're not into forecasting, we're not uh, into debating, we're into uh, raw data that turns into uh, price action on confirmation. So hopefully uh, everybody is continuing to get a lot of value uh, off uh, this thinking, this channel, and hopefully you guys will be with us for a very long time. Again, we appreciate uh, your viewership. So let's talk about the tape. Um, January the 11th, right? Not a lot of people are going to point uh, to January 11th and say uh, that was a very, very important day uh, for 2023, right? Uh, matter of fact, a lot of people right now say, well, what, what happened on January 11th? Well, um, the most basic thing about technical analysis, um, the exception of the 200-day moving average, which is the mother of all uh, moving averages. That's the long-term uh, outlook of what's going to happen. Uh, the 50-day moving average is the closest thing to uh, the 200, right? And whoever has control uh, over the 200-day moving average is probably going to have control over intermediate uh, term um, sentiment. It's pretty much uh, it's pretty much been like that. If you back test, it's pretty much been like that uh, for years and years and years. And it's pretty basic stuff when I tell uh, new traders kind of how to look at the market. Above the 50-day moving average is, is bullish. Below the 50-day moving average is bearish. Now, if you go back to all the way through 2022, right, we spent about 80, 85 percent of 2022 below the tw the 50-day moving average. That's this, uh, you know, the light blue line. And, you know, with the market got killed. Last year, the NASDAQ was down uh, 31%. That's pretty big, right? The Qs were down 31% last year. Uh, that's a big deal. So if you fast forward to kind of where we are uh, present day, uh, January 11th was a, an important part of what we're seeing here and where we are present day. Because January the 11th, uh, the NASDAQ bulls reclaimed the 50-day moving average. That was this candle right over here. And um, there was two times, there was two times within this whole channel since January the 11th that the NASDAQ tried to, well, the bears tried to reclaim back the 50-day moving average. And that was on January the 19th. And that was on March the 13th. And what happened was to give the to give you an idea of how strong this market is, the next day the bulls reclaimed back the 50 day. And here we are at all time highs. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Now, to put this into, you know, put to put this into perspective, um, how strong this market is, keep this in mind. There was absolutely no materialistic reason that the bulls got tired on January 6th, which basically started the bottoming, right? The bottoming channel of what we're seeing where we are right now. There was no materialistic news, right? The, the economy uh, was still crappy. We we're still recovering from the pandemic. Biden's doing whatever Biden's doing. Uh, so there was nothing materialistically that you could turn to that day and turn around and say, well, we're going to be at all time highs only five months later. And again, raise your hand uh, after, you know, after after what we saw in 2022 and what we saw for the first, you know, for the first week and a half, two weeks of 2023, raise your hand if you thought we were going to be at, at all, to, at, you know, uh, 52 week highs or yearly highs. Me either, right? That's the whole me either. And, you know, the one thing that I've, I've been always uh, trying to drive the point across, and I'm doing this for, you know, 24 years, a long, long time, right? I've stopped rationalizing with the market, what I thought the market was going to do, what I think is going to market do years ago, okay, a decade, de decade and a half ago, okay, I'm not that smart. Matter of fact, again, if you're watching this channel for the first time, I'm the king of the idiots, so the furthest thing from smart I am. 
So I, I don't go into any single trading day trying to predict or trying to show anybody how smart I am. I'm dumbing it down as much as I can. I'm proving to myself once again how my opinion doesn't matter and nothing that I think or, or, or believe that's going to happen in the future will actually play out that way. We'll go into fruition. So I try to play every single day based on the previous night's research. So if the market reclaimed the 50-day moving average on January 11th, you know, the notion going into January 12th was it was going to be bullish, right? It was going to be bullish just because basic technical analysis above the 50-day bullish, below the 50-day bearish. And that's how I approach every single day. So the idea that we uh, are rallying right now, and I see a lot of people complaining and belly aching. Well, the economy sucks. The market sucks. Everybody's laying off. It doesn't, and again, it has nothing to do with trading. It really has nothing to do with trading. There's always been a disconnect for years and years and years. And, I've, and this isn't the first time I said it. I've been saying this uh, in videos for nauseam, all, you know, all going all the way back to when we lost the 50-day moving average in 2022. The market and the economy means nothing. Again, keep this in mind. We had a global pandemic. Again, raise your hand if you ever thought you can live through a global pandemic in your lifetime right? Me either. We had a global pandemic that the world was shut down for two weeks, right? Logically, we should have been cut in half, right? Cut in half. We had the, the biggest single, single month rally a month later in April 2020. The market doesn't need to make sense. It never has to make sense. All it needs to do is market sentiment. Buyers clean up sellers at supply, the market goes higher. Seller, sellers clean up buyers uh, at, the, uh, at demand, the market goes lower. That's it. There is nobody, you know, you know, the strings. It's the Fed. It's the Fed. It's the market makers. It's the dark pools. This no, it's you. It's me, right? It's you. It's me. You know, we're not. It, nobody's causing us to have problems in our accounts, right? It's not the market makers. Not the dark pools. It's not the Fed. Okay. And especially, and again, and I've always, I, I've, I, I've never understood the point. If you're sitting there complaining, well, the market's only going up because of the Fed, you already acknowledge, okay, there's a reason why the market's going up. Why not take advantage of the long side? Why sit there and belly ache? Well, the market's only going, well, take take that information, use that information for, uh, to, to progress your account. But no, you're going to sit there and complain about that the market doesn't make sense. This is stupid. Yeah, life is stupid. Life is not fair. Well, why do you think trading is any different, right? Life's not fair. Trading is not fair. Get over it, right? Get over it. Okay, we're not, you know, it, it's the world doesn't revolve around us. Market's either going to go up or market's either going to go down. There's, there's nothing that you're going to put out there in the universe that's going to make it go your way. You want it to go lower. You want it to go higher. doesn't mean the market wants to do the same thing. So it's very, very important to kind of omit your opinion, right? Omit, omit your opinion. Stop arguing, right? Stop arguing with random strangers on social media that they're wrong that the market's going up. No, the market is going up. Right, that's that's the whole point. We close at we close at the highs for the yearly highs. The market is going up despite what you think is happening in the economy. And again, I agree. Right, you have inflation. You have you know you have some softening uh, housing prices in certain parts of the country. You have this. You have that. You have the third. But yet here we are. Right here we are. So instead of spending your time unproductively, okay, um, fighting with complete strangers about what you think is going to happen in the market, which by the way nobody cares about. Right, nobody cares about. Right, nobody cares about your opinion. Nobody cares about it. my opinion. It, the, the fair value of the market is always the four o'clock closing price. Right, that's it. You know, the queues are not overextended at three twenty ninety three. Right, and they're not cheap at three twenty ninety three. This is fair value. This is the last closing price at net asset value when the market closed. So there's no such thing as this is you know this is uh, oversold. This is overbought. It is. The final price is what the market is. This is what fair value is. If fair value was at 287, we would have been trading at 287. So it's very, very important to disconnect yourself. You know, set the, you know, set the mindset or reset the mindset of understanding that it is what it is, right? It is what it is. That's, that's sometimes you just have to look at life and say it is what it is. It's not fair. It doesn't make sense. But you know what? We're here. And if you're going to be a professional trader or you're aspiring to be a professional trader, you have to disconnect yourself from the whole social media uh, mindset that something's going on at all times, that it ha always have to make sense, that I have to poll 6,500 6, people to make sure everybody's thinking exactly the same thing as me. Look, everybody's in the same playing field, and it's called technical analysis. It's all right in front of you, right? When the market reclaims the 50-day moving average, it's bullish. When the market, you know, when bears reclaim the 50-day moving average, it's bearish. When stocks can't go down on bad news, again, we just had a mini banking issue. Right? Can't even call it crisis. I'm not sure. Three weeks, 
is uh, is is entitled to be called a crisis. But we had an issue, right? We had a banking issue for three weeks. So I, I think what four or five banks went out of business. And just just think about the logic, right? And again, just think about the logic. It's illogical that we're going higher, but yet here we are, right? A banking crisis or a banking mini situation couldn't get the market lower. So what are we talking about here, right? Think about it. what are we talking about here? What's the point of of using all this energy, built up frustration, arguing with somebody that this is so bad? Just take the market for what it is. Trade both sides of the market. Now, look, is this market going to go up all the time? Absolutely not, right? We could be having a conversation uh, Monday night, right? Tomorrow night's video. Well, that was a hell of a run, but look at the reversal of the market, right? Anything is possible. But again, like I say, every single video, don't we owe it to ourselves as professional traders or as right, aspiring professional traders to be prepared on both sides of the market and trade the market that we have, not the market we want, right? It, it's, it's just sometimes... You have to dumb things down in life. You have to simplify things in life to kind of put it into perspective of what's about to happen next, or at least be prepared to what happens next. I don't know definitively what's going to happen on Monday, right? I have no idea. I'm guessing, right? I'm guessing, and when my research is telling me, yeah, we look higher, just the same way if we looked, if you if you uh, watched one's, uh, Wednesday night's video, the spies reclaimed the 50-day moving average, right? Just all you got to do is go back to Wednesday night's video. And all I said is unless there's a, a banking collapse, and I'm not talking about, uh, you know, I, I think, and no disrespect to, to I think I, I used uh, mi middle, uh, middle Valley, North Tennessee, uh, countrywide <laughs> credit union, you know, no disrespect to them. But unless, and I said it Wednesday, Wednesday's video, unless it was like a city bank that was collapsing, we were going to go higher because again, we reclaimed the 50 day moving average. Again, it had nothing to do with anything that was going on in the market. I knew the market's discounting bad news. We reclaimed the 50 day moving average and here we are, right? So I, I think, look, I, I, there's two types of traders out there. There's traders who uh, they want to be right and then there's traders who want to be sensible, okay? And I'm one of these traders that I don't care about being right, okay? Uh, it doesn't make a difference to me. I'm wrong every single day, right? I'm, I'm wrong every single day. Like, for example, right? We talked about Tesla. We'll get to the pivots in a second. We talked about Tesla for two weeks. Two weeks. And I said, well, if this thing starts breaking out above this channel, it should explode. It did explode, right? It was, it was a fantastic trade on Friday. Absolute fantastic trade on Friday. And, and if it wasn't coming out with uh, delivery numbers, and by the time you watch this video, right now it's 9.17 in the morning on Sunday morning, by the time they come out with the delivery numbers, uh, we're going to know, you know which way Tesla's going to trade tomorrow. But I had a really, really great move on Tesla. And my last sale was at this uh, 204 level into supply, right? Into, into supply, and it kept on going. And I never bought it back for the overnight because... I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to gamble into, into numbers. Maybe they're good. Maybe they're bad. But the point is, right? If if I told you from face value, is Tesla going higher or Tesla going lower based on based on Friday's close? Right? Doesn't it look like it wants to explode? It doesn't it look like it wants to test that two fifteen level? But if I knew a hundred percent, then yes, I would take it overnight. Again, granted. I do have seller's remorse, and, and before the numbers come out, I actually wish I did have uh, I did have some Tesla overnight. But the point is, again, we make our choices, right? We make our choices based on common sense, technical analysis, and no emotions. And you live with those choices, right? If, if Tesla, you know, you know, if Tesla opens up at two fifteen on Monday on great numbers, right? Yeah, it's going to suck, but I made that choice, right? I'm willing to live with that choice. Believe me, I'm going to be hating on all you guys who are along the two fifteen, two twenties going into this week, just understand that, right? But at least I made that choice. And that's what it is. Life's about choices, training's about choices, and putting yourself in the safest place for a feasibility study that's going to play out to your to your discretion. And the point is, whatever you do in this business, do it in a matter of comfortability, common sense, and logic. Always think safety first. Again, I've always said this all the time. It's this trading and this gambling you know, it, you know, again, what I would, should I have kept the run, you know, kept the run or kept something overnight on Tesla? I think I should have, but again, we live with our choices and it is what it is. And hopefully for all you guys who are uh, trading Tesla or have a position in Tesla, you'll get that move uh, into 215, 220. Or if you guys want to get a little bit of light move, a little bit of washout at the open, let your boy, come, you know, join the party as well. So anyway, let's talk about it, right? So phenomenal moves in the markets. Um, Technology has been absolutely on fire. Uh, the queues have been absolutely going nuts. We talked about every single level uh, on the video, uh, you know, pretty much every day, every level got, you know, they took out 
uh, the 312s, they took out the three, you know, 15s, and now we have to switch to the weekly chart, right? We have to switch to the weekly chart because we there's no, you know, there's no reference point on the daily chart when the Q, where the Qs could potentially land. Now again, there's there is a pocket here into the weekly supply of 328. Uh, is there a shot against there? Sure, why not? We had a massive, massive breakout. Uh, again, I don't know what's going to happen day to day. Um, I, you know, I am, you know, I have predominantly long bias going into Monday. But again, you know, if that changes, that you know, I, I change with it. I'm not attached. You know, I'm not attached to the market. I'm not attached to any individual stock. Uh, I'm I'm in touch with reality. I'm in touch with safety. But if you look at the weekly chart, we had a phenomenal, phenomenal breakout on, on the daily chart uh, on the Qs. Got above the 316 level, and now we have. Uh, an air pocket coming here on the 328 weeklies, which is, looks absolutely phenomenal. Uh, SPY, again, we discussed on Wednesday uh, how we reclaimed the 50-day moving average, super duper bullish, and now it's uh, at 401.60. Now we're at uh, 410. Uh, if you look at this whole channel here, it has room. The next supply is roughly 413, and then we have about you know 414 and on, uh, so forth and so on. Uh, the one group that had a little bit of issues was... Uh, this week was the IWM because there was so many of these regional banks. But but look again, put this into perspective. With all that I just said, with all that you know problems with the regional banks, the IWM. This is the whole. This is the highest close in this whole formation, despite all these regional banks that are getting slaughtered right in that index. This is the highest close in the whole formation. If the IWM starts reclaiming back. This 179 level, right? If the IWM guys, and just keep this keep keep this on watch for for Monday. If the IWM starts reclaiming this 179 level, despite all these potential battered banks, regional banks, and even even more so potentially going out of business, right? We have a moonshot here, all the way up to this 181, 182 level on the IWM. So we're set, right? Uh, again, I would like to get a, a you know I would love to get a, a week open on Monday. Uh, just to get some strong stocks into potential rising support. You know, we'll see if that happens. There's a lot of really great looking channels. Um, you know, the market looks really, really good. It really, really does. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the pivots on Friday. As you can imagine, uh, everything went nuts. All these, all, all these charts that we talked about, we, we, we've been, you know, we've been covering day in, day out. Uh, Meta, you know, 208, tell me if you heard this before, 208 rejected X amount of times. Uh, needs to build. Meta went absolutely nuts. Finally, finally broke out. Uh, Meta went nuts. It got rejected off with 208 three times. Uh, stock had this phenomenal push uh, into the close at 312. Uh, two, excuse me, 212. You have a whole bunch of 215s coming in uh, for this week. It has measured potential here at 216. Uh, if it continues, uh, this is definitely the trade of the day. Uh, 9740 rejected twice daily. Uh, needs to build again. We've, we've been watching. I love Tesla. I mean, what's not to love? Uh, so Tesla again took out this whole channel here, right? This little baby channel here, and this is kind of what we talk about: sneaky pivots. If you ever watch the PS60 workshop, you hear about sneaky pivots. It's not the highs, it's not the lows. It's this meat of the channel right in between. So it stopped at 97.40, uh, both on March the 27th and on and March the 30th. It finally got above the the 97.40. Finally got got above the macro level at uh, 201. I thought it was going to stop that exhaustion, that last bar in the 204s. That's kind of where I made my last sale. And it just kept on going, right? It just kept on going. Again, we'll see what the delivery numbers are uh, at some point this evening. Uh, again, I'm not a big gambler. I, I, I like to, uh, if there's risk, I'd like to make sure, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm in control of that risk. But Tesla looks great. Uh, if this thing continues, you know, this definitely has room to 213, 250. But phenomenal. I know a lot of you guys are still holding uh, runners overnight. Uh, NVIDIA has been an absolute monster as they were coming in for, you know, short-term expiration, the 280s, the 290s. Uh, NVIDIA, 275, and last week's 276 highs uh, needs to build. Here's NVIDIA. As you, I mean, you can imagine everything went nuts. So it took out 75, took out 76, uh, traded up into the 278s. Again, has measured potential all the way up to 285. Uh, the upper Bollinger Band. Uh, Roku, I was watching to the downside, never got there. Uh, Airbnb gapped up, uh, gapped up. I stopped watching it. Uh, two, 123 was the, was the, was the pivot. It gapped up way above there. I think it traded to 126, never gave us an opportunity there. Uh, Microsoft continues to be Microsoft, uh, 284 and a half, uh, 285 needs to build. Here's Mr. Softy. Again, Microsoft has just been an absolute stud. Took out this whole range, has measured potential all the way up to 292. 
if the market continues. And this FSLY, again, just to give you an idea how strong this market is, right? FSLY has nothing to do, absolutely nothing to do uh, with beta, with 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 uh, mega cap technology. 1720 uh, needs to build. Here was FSLY, right? Here, for FSLY took out the 1720, uh, traded up to 18 and change. Uh, this thing uh, looks higher as well. So again, we're set up. You know, we're set up for Monday. Uh, market looks good. Again, would it, would it shock me that we're down 300 points on Monday? Nothing shocks me anymore. But that's the whole point. You want to be ready uh, for both sides. So let me give you guys some uh, some ideas for uh, going into Monday. Uh, the AI group has been out of its mind. AI obviously has been the leader. Uh, massive call buying coming in all over the place. If this thing gives, uh, a, it probably won't, but if this thing gives us a down open, uh, let's keep an eye on this thing for a potential bounce off any rising support. This thing looks like an absolute monster uh, continuation. Another name in that group is Path, right? Look at Path. This, somebody bought... Uh, I believe somebody bought the 1,022 and a half calls for the next couple of weeks. Keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts coming out of this whole channel here, man. This thing could really, really rip. Uh, same group. Uh, another little stock. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to just, again, just show you how good this market is. I'm not even, we're not even talking about beta right now. Look how strong some of these smaller stocks is. Look at the stock ARLO, right? Look at this thing. If this thing starts confirming Friday's channel, uh, this thing can wake up, and this other little one. And again, look, look, how, look how good this market is. RLX, right? RLX. A buyer came in for ten thousand. There was a block of ten thousand for short-term three fifty calls. So again, market looks really, really good. Um, again, folks, remember that, that. Look, you could spend your time productively making yourself better, being a better person, better father, better husband, better wife, better friend, better brother, better sister, better trader where you can sit there bitching and moaning about things you can't control, right? You're sitting there complaining about this just total strangers about how horrible this market is because it's not crashing. While you're waiting for this crash and the world to go to zero and the meteor to come and kill us all, you're missing a really, really cool market. Okay, guys, stop, you know, stop the whole, you know, bravado, stop the whole being, you know, being that type of person. Live your life, put a smile on your face. God bless, stay in business. And let's all meet up again tomorrow for another round of nonsense of Ash Shapiro turns. Guys, have a great day. Have a great week. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow.